you are listening to and are watching our podcast called Wormhole Pinball Presents. My name is Jamie Birchall, and today I'm very excited to be joined by Carl D'Angelo of IE Pinball. Carl, welcome to the Wormhole Virtually. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate the invite. How are you feeling, first of all? Uh, doing well. Doing well now. Yeah. Okay. Good, because I understand you You know, you know, were ill during Indisc, and, uh, but I also heard you managed to put in a pretty decent one card. Yeah, I got one card in on Friday, just enough to get somewhere in the mid-70s, I think in the uh in the end of things but uh yeah that was unfortunate yeah but, uh, i was thrilled to have so much help during the event well we'll talk about that later but um yeah. for those that don't know in this stands for it never drains in southern california and it's been held since what 2012 i think right around there right around there yeah have you always been involved with in yeah yeah since day one uh it was uh myself and jim uh we wanted a tournament local to Southern California because at the time there weren't any big tournaments in Southern California. So there was California Extreme. We'd all travel to Northern California for the big event every year. But um, we wanted one here. So it started small and grew and grew and grew beyond our expectations. Wow. I mean, you won in 2015 and 17, right? Right. Um, right. Some other notable names that have won the Open include uh, Escher Lefkoff, Zach McCarthy, now twice. Uh, and Keith Ellen won a few, uh, mm -hmm. just to name a few people. Uh, when was it a major? When w was it always considered a major? No, it was once we were at the um, Riverside Convention Center, right? Uh, three years ago. So Zach McCarthy was the first one that won the the Open itself. Okay, I believe. I'm pretty sure. No, no worries. Yeah, yeah, but but yeah. So 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 the last three years, I believe. Uh, the yeah, Zach McCarthy after Escher Lefkoff and Zach McCarthy again. So okay. they've won the majors. And what are the other majors for those that don't know? Uh, we have the IFPA World Championships. We have the uh, European Pinball Championships, the EPC. We have Pemberg now coming back this year. Coming back, right. And then the uh, the uh, defunct one uh, is Papa, the Papa World Championships. Okay. Uh, so this year you were really unable to produce because you weren't feeling well, but I understand Jordan and Rebecca Fliptronic and the Pluto from Twitch. Right helped you tremendously yeah absolutely uh without their help there wouldn't have been a stream this year um it, it was amazing phenomenal. they did they did fantastic i couldn't have asked for for uh anyone better to be helping out yeah were you stressed watching them or were you stressed for them or uh i was a little stressed for them a little stressed watching uh there was one moment where jordan panicked a bit because um someone uh, on the telestrator held their finger down which then wiped out the entire screen and it's the projector screen in OBS. So he didn't know how to get it back. So it's furiously texting with him and gotten a video call finally and got it taken care of. But uh, outside of that, everything went pretty smoothly. I'd say. Yeah, I, I'd say, I mean, it was an amazing production. Uh, you had what? 15,000 viewers at one point on Twitch. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's was, just incredible. It's, it's, it's insane. And that's all thanks to, uh, to Pluto, you know, getting us on the front page. Well, it, it was also really a phenomenal production. And, you know, Zach McCarthy went in the open again and Dalton, Eli winning high stakes was just amazing viewing. I mean, I was up till two in the morning and it was just amazing pinball. So congratulations on another great stream there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's shift for a few moments. You're currently ranked 30th in the pro ranking and 36th in the open ranking. I have no idea what a pro ranking is. Can you kind of tell me what the difference is? Uh, the pro rankings are the top 250 players are weighted on a different scale. It takes into it takes your effective percentage, effective something into into account. So, and it's um, it basically just changes how it's calculated. Uh, to be honest, I haven't been following too much of the IPA stuff. I mean, I watch it, but it's gotten to the point that I don't. I'm not actively watching my own ranking and how to improve it, especially with the pro rankings, because it's a different calculation than the okay. main. But I know, I know I did because I didn't play an in disc or where I got I actually dropped quite a bit. Other people, you know, bumped up. There were so many points available at in disc. Oh yeah. I'm so, the, my reason for my question is I, I, I don't have a pro ranking and I was just wondering, you know, what the heck that was. And since I'm 2000th in the world and in, in IFBA, I think it's going to be a really long time before I get that pro ranking. So, uh, <laughs> my question, another question going back to pinball, uh, skill set. Did you have like an aha moment when you first started playing where you said, 
you know what? I'm pretty good at this. Um, I've always, I mean, as a kid, I always played. I just didn't know about tournaments. So I remember, you know, riding my bike down to the local piece of joint, playing Adam's family, touring the mansion, um, you know, doing that kind of stuff on all the games I would play. But I had no idea if it was a, if I was good or not at the time. And then going to tournaments, uh, I won the first league season I was ever in at the Orange County Pinball League. Um, and that's kind of when I went, okay, maybe I am good at this. And yeah. I should start traveling and trying for stuff. You know, and I put a, the IFPA World Championships that were in uh, Bainbridge Island at Tom McCulloch's house. That was the first time I really said, okay, I'm going to be serious. I'm going to work this year and try to get into that World Championship. And I, and I was able to. And I took sixth or seventh there, I think it was, for my first IFPA Worlds, which, which was phenomenal. And, yeah. you know, that kicked things off, really. One of the things I watch you know, when I'm watching these competitive pinball is how patient they are. I saw this at Indisc. We saw it this week. We streamed uh, the Texas State Championships. They tend, you guys tend not to flip unnecessarily. And you, the biggest thing is you go for like this bang for your buck. What If it's too risky, not going to do it. I mean, do you find the patience is a key for some amateur players for them to get going? Oh, absolutely. It's about planning your shots out and planning, you know, having just a game plan in general when you're when you're playing uh take it easy don't rush um i like to say one of the best training formats is the it's not played much but the heads up pinball format i don't know if you've seen any of this where you have two games side by side and you're racing to a goal but yeah. there's some other format that uh, you know everyone wants to rush through it so it kind of you know it's similar to this but if you take your time slow down if you're the player that's calm and relaxed you're probably the one that's going to win that uh, that battle and the same thing goes in uh in regular tournament play you just want to take your time um plan your shots i like to cradle up not everyone does some people plan the fly and they play a lot better on the fly um so there's you know different player styles but i definitely find for most people if they slow down take the time their uh, skill set will improve yeah i've noticed that uh but i i went from down to like 1500s and so i'm started making a move and then i wasn't dead bouncing well enough so now i've try to incorporate that in my game and it's just put me in a tizzy i'm not there yet but i'll get there i mean it's, it's fun I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be in the top 1000 but i just enjoy the hell out of playing and i love the competitive aspect of it it's just really fun but you might be why i mean why wouldn't you be why why do i mean i, I don't know the time the games knowledge that you guys have i just I, i'm starting to get it just because i commentate so much but uh yeah it takes a lot of time you have to know all the games um one of the things i was talking i was talking with rebecca uh recently and and yeah. we're talking about um she really wants to win the women's uh state championship in texas so she, we're actually talking about analyzing her play and going over you know watching her stream and you know I give her some pointers on you know what she did here what she did there why did you make this decision and uh, it's something i i think anyone that wants to improve their game you know go back and review your footage if you can or record yourself playing and watch the footage See if you, you know, pause, you know, if you see a crucial moment coming, pause the video and think, okay, what would you do in this situation? Would you dead bounce? Would you drop catch? And see if you can predict what you did. And if you, if you, if you didn't, then maybe in the future you will. That is phenomenal advice, ladies and gentlemen. No, really, that's great advice. Uh, you know, it makes me think, I went back onto your videos on demand on YouTube and you've got a, a lot of them. <laughs> uh and you started streaming all the way back in 2012 right you streamed the first the first one you did um you recorded it i mean it's been a while um but you did stream 2015 you made like massive strides in production right i mean you started you, you probably went from a phone or from one camera to this production i mean was anyone else really streaming competitive pinball back in 2015 so yeah, there was a Papa was streaming. Okay. A couple of things. They were, and uh, then you also had um, the Elwins, Keith and Randy were were actually taking recorded uh, video of gameplay at the Calvary Extreme when they went. They had a whole rig that they would bring and then record it for later. Um, but Papa, when they had their Kickstarter, their final goal was our tournament, and that kind of kicked off. You know, when I knew they weren't going to come the next year to stream it because they were the first ones to stream in disc. Um. I went, okay, it's time to pick up more equipment and try and, uh, you know, have a production of their scale. Yeah. Well, I think you've 
your production is, is unbelievable. Let's let's talk about tournament streaming real quick because I love it. I it's one of my favorite things to do is to tournament stream here at the wormhole. And you know, we're just trying not to so much copy you, but just go, okay, I mean, how can we incorporate this? I love how he's doing this. I love what they're doing here. I mean, it's really a compliment. I mean, you've really set the bar very high for us, <laughs> a little too high sometimes. Because <laughs> when I watch your streams really quick, I think I'm watching ESPN, maybe the Ocho, but I really do think it's like an ESPN event. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. I mean, do you have a vast technology background that kind of helps you with this? Yeah, I've always been in IT, uh, yeah. my professional career. So it, it just comes naturally to me, um, you know, working in OBS and, you know, all the cameras have just been a hobby, you know, and just upgraded over the years, you know. As so you're a, not, you're a constant tinkerer, right? You're constantly trying to make it better. I'm always changing. Every year I've got something new on the rig. Like this year, the new thing, my, my, my favorite thing for Mendisk was buying these massive batteries. I mean, these, these gigantic single batteries that I don't have to worry about, you know, the little ones and plugging them in and constantly. I've got eight of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, so because I, I knew I mean, it was, yeah. I had space between games to use this thing. Uh, I, I love it. it. It, you know, like 60% of the those, battery. Yeah, yeah. I bought those for uh, TPF because we got classics, wizards, all these things. Right. And at the end of the day, you're right. It's 60%. You've only used sixty percent. I mean, it's just incredible. These batteries. You can't take them on a plane. You're not supposed oh. to anyway. Yeah. But uh, uh, so you use OBS. Can I ask you? You seem to be the OBS expert. Why does it crash? And why does that happen to me? <laughs> well, I have mine crash too. I actually switched from XSplit to OBS just maybe three years ago. I was using XSplit for the longest time. Oh, really? And I finally went. To, yeah, and then that thing just. They stopped supporting it really, and OBS had more features, more everything, you know, plugins. So, no, why is it crash? I, I, I could not tell you to be honest. I was hoping for that. That if you I use that studio camera. mode on mine, I mean, it, it it does crash. So that's one thing I I annoyed with is like I didn't. I'd really like to use studio mode so I can see what's coming up and not be blind going into a camera. But uh, that makes my machine crash for whatever reason. Yeah, um, my, mine is Windows Capture. The okay. Windows Capture function itself will get caught up. Okay. I don't know, but I got to use it. You have to. Yeah. To, uh, try different browsers. Try yeah. you know, if That's you haven't idea. already. You know, normally I'm using Firefox for whenever I do a window capture instead of Chrome or Edge. I use Firefox. Okay. Well, well then. That's not going to help you out. <laughs> we'll Sorry. Figure out. No, 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 no worries. Uh, who you don't get on air very much when you're at Indisk as no. much. No, you, you prefer to have a group of commentators? Yeah, it's always a group of commentators, and that's uh, Jeff Teolis that's organizing that for me. Yeah. Uh, and he does a fantastic job putting the team together. We pre-schedule it so that everyone knows when they're coming on, um, and so there's no surprises. Uh, so we are, we're always ready, and he has a couple backups in case you know someone that was supposed to be in the booth is actually playing in finals. But it's uh, the last two years we've done that, and it's helped out tremendously just with the quality of, of the group and the commentating. I need to do that for TPF because it's kind of a flowing thing. Yeah. And I don't like that as much. I need, I need the organization for it and uh, it drives me bananas. And then I don't want to hurt people's feelings, right? By saying no, you yep. know, Bob Matthews has only been on for 15 minutes. You know, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. And so I need that structure and I, we'll see if I can pull that off. At I mean, on the flip side, if you, if you don't, if you don't do that, people tend you know, there are some that will tend to stay in the booth for six or eight hours, and you don't yeah. want that. It's nice to rotate out everybody and have a fresh perspective, you know, um, around, around. You don't show your commentators much because, you no. know, right. well, what's that philosophy? Because is uh, it like ESPN doesn't show, you know. I mean, the, 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 the focus of the tournament isn't on the commentators, it's on the players. So that's right. why I, I try, I, I, I want to focus in on, on the specific people playing, and that's why we follow the same group uh, for an entire round. You want to watch that story of these four players and and how they do, how they progress. How many rigs do you have? I have two rigs, and the second rig. I mean, I've had two rigs for a while. The Indus was the first time I had actually tried using both at once. Um, I don't know if I'll do it again at the convention center because the Wi-Fi is just a absolute mess. They just they they are just blasting the entire room with massive amounts of two point four and five gigahertz to the point that things just drop out it, it's it's wild um 
but yeah, two rigs. Uh, normally at home, I, I I use wireless, but after Indisc, I rewired things up for actually a wired connection here. So, uh, we used our first two rigs. I call it the two rig system, and because uh, I'm a dork, and uh, so I I implemented the two rig system first time Texas State Championships. Okay, Rebecca's in here with me, and it is rocking. What we did is we did a primary group, kind of like golf, right? You've got your you know, your, your foursome that you want to follow. Yep. And, and the, you know, I called the other rig two pop in group for three hours, Carl. Perfect. Yep. And it all went to hell. Hmm. It all went to hell. all my other cameras on rig two, all the, I had a perfect rig one that was all set. And then I tinkered with other things for rig two and it just didn't work. So we're not, that was not ready for prime time. So I just scrapped it in the semis and followed just one group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of what we did at the end of Indisc. I, I told them turn off that second rig because it was causing interference, and I, I wanted to make sure that primary rig was was always rock solid. Um, yeah, I, I didn't want to. I saw off. you. I saw them do that, and I said, "Oh, that won't happen to me." <laughs> <laughs> so the, the 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 one thing I have been working on is trying to. I want I want to get a a dedicated computer on each rig, and then I only have one wireless transmitter. So I basically pop everything into a local OBS on the rig itself. Mm. And then I have one transmitter going back to the main station. And then I could, you know, theoretically run up the six rigs if I'm running six wireless connections. I won't have six rigs because that's a ridiculous amount ridiculous. of equipment. But the, uh, but the idea is that less uh, interference with Wi-Fi, you know, like you're using less wireless transmitters. So hopefully. Yeah, I've got six X soons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's my limit or my wife will murder me. If yeah. I more <laughs> I'm with you there. I mean, my God. Uh, do you prefer a three or two person booth? Uh, it depends on the tournament. The uh, the larger tournaments, I want three. On um, anything small, I'll take a two. Okay. Do you have official rig mover? No, it's usually me. This yeah. this this, time, this year was the first time I really had help that uh, I felt I could I could count on moving the rig. I don't have because I'm on air, right? So I'm jumping back all back and forth. And so I like a couple of players that I know I trust as rig movers. And so you'll see me tend to follow them a little more. Mm -hmm. I don't yep. mean it. I just trust them to put it in. Wesley, he knows that he's uh, very, very trusted. So um, what kind of cameras do you like to choose? And I'm not going to rip everything you say off. I'm just curious. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I And it's I've always meant to get a website up with all my equipment. I just never have. It's just the time to put stuff together. Um, but I'm using all Sony ZV ones now, or ZV one okay. Mark twos. I have one ZV one Mark two, and everything else is ZV ones. I, I buy them used on Amazon. Yeah, me too. Yeah. You must be fighting with me because <laughs> I I'm done. I, done. No more. All right, because I only have two, and then I miss. I bought a ZV one F, and I don't like it. So no, yeah, because I, I want the I want the zoom capability. Yeah. Even though I add wide angle lenses to my ZV ones. Really? Yeah. Oh, so for, the, for the player and the score, I add those. Not for the play field. That that's just play field fine. Player score wide angle lens, especially the score. Yeah, that way, and I put those on a really long magic arm so that I can I can move it where I need to to get the scores. All right, that's some good information there, ladies and gentlemen, for me and nobody else. But I'm sorry about that. <laughs> we had uh, Texas State champion uh, Chip this weekend, and, and former champ uh, Comic Compine was sitting next to me, and he's commentating, and he goes, uh, "Do you have a tablet for me?" I said, dude, my name is Jamie. It is not Carl. I do not have a tablet for you. Uh, you have to point to your screen that I gave you, and I'll use Epic Pen. Uh, the, the tablet system seems brilliant. It's awesome. The tablet as in the, the Telestrator? The Telestrator that you have oh. for everyone. And all that is is a touchscreen monitor. That's all you need for OBS. That's it? That's it. Yeah. So, like, I've got one of my, this, you know, my mobile rig right here. This is a touchscreen that I use for when I'm streaming here at home. And then everything else, I've got a, you know, just a Dell touchscreen secondary monitor on my main PC. And then there's a plugin, a whiteboard plugin written by actually a pinball community member, Mike Welsh. What, what do you have moving uh, forward stream wise? What do you have coming up? Uh, nothing. Well, I, I, I'll be streaming Pinberg in July. I'm actually going to send all my equipment out there to do that. Apart from that, I do Wednesday nights as much as I can for my home streams. And, and then, Ace Gogi, whenever we have a launch party, we'll do the heads up launch uh, finals. As a, are you going to stream the national? I mean, the internet or the 
what is it this in southern california the nationals or the uh not nationals what is it the one that yeah the the world's all i'll stream that i mean the jim belcitos yeah okay that's gonna be awesome yeah that should be fun i'm i'm yeah yeah do you have less stress on your wednesday streams than you do on the tournaments because i have these we do monday night streams and they're very unstressful at all it's just who cares uh yeah I'd say I'd say so. I mean, I I can still like when I'm streaming on my own. If I'm getting close to one of my goals, you know, I can start getting nervous and stressed at that point. But the actual stream itself, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's more casual. Um, one day I want to invite you to Houston, not only for the Houston Arcade Expo, which is a blast, by the way. It's more of a fun party than it is. Uh, but the tournament's serious, based City Open, but the the expo itself's just a blast. But we are uh, building a museum, and I want you to come to the Wormall because this place is really awesome. I think you'd really love it. Uh, I don't know if you can see the pins behind me, but yeah, this... and I've heard I've heard about it recently from uh, Michael Polero, I believe, was out there. Oh, uh, what? Yeah, he yeah. I, he came in and he sent us an email and he said, "Hey, I'm going to be in town. Any chance you could be open?" And I said, "Well, it's Wednesday night, tech night. You want to come and grab a cloth?" And he, he yeah, you know, I didn't put him to work or anything <laughs> he play as much as he wants. He's a good dude. But uh, go to um houston arcade expo this past year but I, I had to cancel that trip but yeah one day I, i've been meaning to get to it are you gonna go to tpf this year uh, not this year not okay. this year. a lot of people aren't going to tpf they just couldn't get it in their schedule this year it's uh, like a lot of travel is uh, a lot of people are cutting down on travel this year yeah of course you can contact the wormhole at wormhole pinball at gmail.com and please let us uh follow us on twitch and youtube and all the social media platforms all of your videos on demand uh, can be viewed on VODs on YouTube, right? On IE Pinball? Most of them, yeah. But, uh, you have to check those out. And you already have 9,000 individuals on Twitch. Why not get to 10,000? I think you're right there uh, that are following you on Twitch. Uh, Carl, thanks again for hanging out with me tonight. I really appreciate it. I wanted to make it a, a short and sweet interview and just, just hang out with you for a little bit virtually at the wormhole. And thank you for everything you've done for this hobby and sport. I, uh, I really appreciate it. And I love streaming competitive pinball and I love watching you guys do it. Thank you so, so much. Oh, thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate that. No, listen, thank you so much for taking your time with me this evening. I really appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I was a little nervous, but you know, you're Carl D'Angelo. You're the, uh, <laughs> you, you and Fox cities and JDL are, are what we're striving to do here. Right. I mean, you guys just, I've really set the bar very high, and, and I appreciate that because I really don't look at you, anyone as competitors, right? I look at everyone yeah. as different channels. Exactly, I, exactly. Yeah, that's I, how I always look at it too. And I'm always, you know, helping. If you, you, if you, you really, really, help, really anything, are. Just send me a message. And Jim Lindsay's the same way, right? And and Fox Cities is the exact same way. Everyone in this community is so helpful and is so appreciative because one day what i really love is like a sub thing on twitch this is pinball competitive streaming or something how cool would that be another type of category kind of thing another category under pinball right you know pinball competitive pinball i would just be so awesome because it the, the sport is really growing it's thanks to people like yourself and papa and everyone who's made it happen so well we might know the guy to, to... yeah i know but that would be awesome <laughs> you know because i think it's growing as a sport it doesn't have to be on the ocho all right. It can be really a cool thing. So, Carl, thanks for your time. I really appreciate it. Sorry for getting nervous, but we'll get through it. It's all good, Jamie. It's Thank more you. editing on Jamie's behalf. Yeah, yeah, that's not fun. Yeah, ah, it's OK. I'm getting good at it All right. when you screw up as much as I do. Thank you, Carl. You have a all great right, thanks, day. Jamie. And I appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Well, that was one of the first times in an interview that I've had that I was actually really, really nervous. And uh, it's just I'm very, very appreciative of Carl and taking the time to meet with me and, and talk with me and and give his knowledge, you know, because he worked really hard. He built such a phenomenal stream. And for him to take the time to to uh, to meet with me was really appreciative. Uh, really want to thank Tim and Christine Hood for making all this possible for us and uh, also for opening up this great place uh, for the Texas State Championship uh, for both the Open and for the Women's Championship what a weekend we had here we had a phenomenal weekend and i just want to give some quick thanks to uh everyone here so i'm going to look over to the side but first of all john spates feel better buddy okay uh thanks again for all your hard work this last weekend you were incredible uh Kyle McAlpine, phil grimaldi and elizabeth trone for putting up the amazing state finals they just did a phenomenal job they really did and all the techs that make these machines completely sing. Uh, Brian, Zach, Lee, Spence, Mike Flanagan, Travis Mosman, Alex, and Brandon for helping me with the two-rig system. We'll get it. We'll get it down, brother. 
Uh, and last but not least, my beautiful wife, Janine, who not only puts up with me and puts up with this hobby, but really supports it and supports what we're doing here at the wormhole. And she is the first one here after a big tournament to come and clean the next day. And she's the best. I mean, what are you going to say about her? She's the best. I love you so much. Uh, and I'll be back next week. Uh, Wormhole Pinball Presents with Rachel Ristow of Wisconsin fame. That should be a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much uh, for listening and uh, watching. I really appreciate you. And uh, we're getting better. We're getting better.